In Japan, where robots and humans coexist, Ken meets a defective bot. He finds himself stuck with it and embarks on a journey to discover its mysterious origins. Ken, an unemployed husband, begins his day playing an augmented reality game. His wife, Emmy, interrupts him to tell there's a weird robot in the back garden. The husband ignores it and commences watching television, so the wife turns it off. She mentions the robot again, but Ken proceeds to look for food. Emmy begins ranting about how Ken Ken fails to do anything, but being thick-skinned, he brushes it off. When Emmy asks about his interview, he escapes to the back garden. He finds a corroding robot, so he approaches it and asks various questions. Surprisingly, it repeats some of his words, so he asks its name. The robot introduces itself as Tang. Soon, Ken brings the bot to a junk shop, but the owner, Oh, comments about its lack of serial number, so it can't be recycled. Ken explains it's not his, so he has no idea. Therefore, Therefore, O opens it up, and they both see a strange core and the brand of Atobit Systems, a major android manufacturer. O assures Ken he can dismantle it for parts. As the man walks away, Tang calls him, and they stare at each other, but Ken bids goodbye and leaves. Unbeknownst to him, Tang continues following Ken. A car drives beside him revealing Sakurako, his sister. She criticizes his sleeping clothes worn outside, showing himself as a freeloader relying on his wealthy wife. The man responds by mocking how her makeup is as harsh as her mouth. Therefore, the sister asks him about his job interview, and he runs away. Meanwhile, Emmy receives a call from the medical center where her husband was interviewed. Later, Ken returns home, leaving the door open, so Tang enters. The bot scans all the pictures in the house and saves them in its file. Then, it spots a napkin box and discovers the joy of pulling it. On the other hand, Ken sees his wife standing about in the storage room and informs her he found something useful. There Therefore, Emmy asks about the room since they discussed converting it to a nursery one day. Ken dismisses it, so when the wife turns to look at him, she asks him why he didn't go to the interview at the hospital his sister referred him to, especially as they already guaranteed him a position as a resident doctor. He responds that he forgot about it, then hurriedly leaves. Emmy demands an explanation, but Ken continuously refuses to answer until they notice Tang with the scattered napkins. Ken uses the bot to dodge Emmy's questioning and reminds her that she'll be late for work by pointing at the analog clock. Unfortunately, the clock isn't wound, so Emmy turns it. As she does, she rants that she's the one working and still does everything at home. She asks what exactly her husband does, and Ken answers he'll fix the gate. Emmy snaps, and she throws the clock on the floor. She asks him until when he'll run away, but Ken blames her for destroying his father's treasured clock instead of answering. She asks him about his life plans, and Ken tells her to shut up. He adds that he no longer cares, leaving Emmy aghast. Realizing what he said, Ken looks at his wife in horror, but this time, she evicts him out the house. The homeless pair wait at the bus stop and Ken complains about his wife. He notices Tang leaking somewhere, so he opens its chest and dries it with a sock. Then, he notices the Atobit logo and scans it on his phone. He's directed to the company website and discovers that they have a special offer to trade old models for new ones. To console Emmy with a new robot, he flies with Tang to Atobit Fukuoka. Tang continues to marvel at almost everything it sees. Trying to sleep, Ken tells it to keep quiet, so the bot turns on the television, collecting various information from the shows that flash. However, its attention is caught by a cartoon about treasures and friends, especially as the characters declare that friends are more important than physical treasures. Ken's sleep is disturbed by a boy who stubbornly throws popcorn at his face. The kid doesn't stop despite his requests, so he curses at him. Tang records and replays his voice before reprimanding Ken for saying a bad word. As the curse plays on loop, he angrily tells Tang that it's useless, but the bot becomes upset and releases hot steam, causing more commotion. As they reach Atobit Fukuoka, they discover it's closed for the day, but Tang turns happy upon finding a coin. That night, they stay in a hotel and while waiting for his coffee to brew, Ken dozes off. He dreams of his past in the hospital, as everyone asks him what to do with his father on the surgery table. He wakes up from a noise and finds Tang and the broken coffee maker, so he reprimands the bot who pretends to be asleep. The following day, he returns to Atobit, but the receptionist rejects his request to trade Tang, saying it's not their model. Meanwhile, Tang explores the facility and sees the model androids arranged as a display. It reminds him of a memory where huge robots shoot down humans. Then, a tour guide named Shinji arrives with a group of children. As he explains the history of robots, the kids notice 
Tang and excitedly surround it. Soon, Shinji asks Ken to inspect Tang. They enter his office and the man discloses that he's a robot designer, but sometimes gets assigned to do tours, concluding that it's probably because of his good looks. As Shinji examines Tang, he discovers that a glass encasing a yellow fluid has cracked. He concludes that the bot will stop functioning without it, so he seals it temporarily. Then, Shinji notices that Tang has curiosity and imagination as it plays with a butterfly, which is unusual for AIs. While taking videos of Tang, he concludes that whoever built the bot used limited resources, but aims to upgrade Tang in the future. Still, the questions remain about who made it and his purpose. Unbeknownst to Shinji and Ken, someone watches them on his screen. Then, the designer looks for friends who can fix Tang. Otsuki volunteers to do so, which reassures Shinji since she majored in robotics and currently works in the world's largest space science museum in Shenzhen, China. As Ken's about to refuse, the designer points out that if he leaves Tang, it'll stop functioning. To escape, the freeloader asks where to buy coffee and brings the bot. While wandering, Tang excitedly explores a festival. At the same time, Emmy sends a message asking where Ken is. As he sees that the bot is preoccupied, Ken turns to leave. Meanwhile, Tang discovers that money is needed to buy toys, and it only has a coin. As the freeloader walks away, Tang calls while running after him. It clumsily holds a cup of coffee and offers it to Ken. It repeats the lines from the cartoon about being there for its friend. Touched, Ken takes the paper cup, but discovers only a few drops left as it spilled on the way. He drinks it anyway, which makes Tang happy. On the other hand, Emmy confides to Sakurako regarding her husband's drastic change after the incident with her father-in-law. The sister listens empathetically, and Emmy confesses there's something she hasn't told Ken yet. At Fukuoka, two men in black approach Shinji to look for Tang. Meanwhile, the friends arrive at Shenzhen and they marvel at the sights. However, upon seeing fireworks, Tang remembers the robot shooting humans and a man in a lab suit pressing a button. The bot hides behind Ken, but he thinks it's just fooling around. Concurrently, Tang's pursuers arrive at Shenzhen. The following day, the friends go to the museum, and Otsuki hugs Tang in delight. While Otsuki and Ken get to know each other, Tang sees a toy car and chases it. The two notice too late that the robot is gone. Simultaneously, the bot follows the toy car into a cage and gets trapped. Then, the pursuers call someone to notify him they have Tang. Ken and Otsuki finally spot Tang in the cage. The researcher instructs Ken to throw her ID into the truck. All the while, a man monitors their movements from his screen. Later, Otsuki informs Ken that their IDs have a GPS tracker. Ken comments that Tang has no value, but Otsuki explains that the bot's AI capacity is human-like. Meanwhile, Emmy recalls the first time she met Ken during her promotion party. She reminisces how determined he was to help people despite his lack of skills and experience. She holds the wine bottle cork Ken gave her as a reminder that things will be alright. Moments later, she calls Ken, who's in the middle of a rescue operation for Tang. Otsuki reprimands him for answering the call at the crucial moment, but Emmy states that she's about to leave the house. She adds that she's done babysitting Ken and feels relieved now that the weight is off her shoulders. Then, she declares she wants them to separate. After a brief moment, he agrees. Emmy drops the call and sobs while Otsuki stares at Ken thoughtfully. She concludes he's a coward who dwells on the past. Suddenly, the warehouse door opens, so the two infiltrate it and see Tang. The men leave the bot, so Ken and Otsuki grab the chance to release it. The researcher finds the key card, and they rescue Tang. But just as they're about to leave, Dr. Kato, the mastermind, stops them, and his cronies appear. The doctor opens Tang's chest and verifies that the microchip is from Dr. Baba, the robotics expert. They drag the bot away, so Ken deliberately insults the bot, saying it's junk. Upset, Tang releases steam, and the pursuers let go of it. Ken takes a slingshot and uses it against the men, making one let go of the taser. Otsuki grabs it and electrocutes the other. The researcher urges them to escape, and due to Ken's concern if the tased man is okay, Tang detects its heartbeat and proclaims he's fine. Otsuki reminds Ken to find Baba, so he leaves with Tang. Once far enough, Tang overheats, and as Ken opens its chest, he sees that the bot is almost running out of liquid. Then, the freeloader's phone rings, revealing Dr. Baba, who thanks him for caring for Tang, who's originally named James. The doctor tells Ken that he'll fix the bot. He adds that Tang is a survivor of an accident in the research facility, so he requests him to bring it home, and they fly to Miyakojima. Upon arriving, Tang hurries to ride a tour boat and marvels at the fish in the ocean. Unlike the bot, 
Todd, Tan reminisces his memories with it and feels sentimental. Once the tour ends, Tang insists on doing it again, which Ken declines. Tang fidgets and steps back, falling into the sea, so Ken saves it. They soon dry up on the beach, and the freeloader cleans Tang earnestly while explaining that it's going home. The bot sincerely tells him it wants to go with him, but Ken refuses since he's incapable. He confesses that his father passed away because he couldn't decide which type of medicine to administer. He also blames himself for being weak for Emmy, so Tang reminds him it's there for him and tries to cheer him up by dancing and singing. Soon, they arrive at Baba's place. Ken and the professor exchange pleasantries, and the freeloader is invited into the house. Baba brings bioethanol, which serves as Tang's fuel. Once recharged, the bot hides behind Ken, so the professor concludes that it has lost its memories. Therefore, Ken buys time by asking about the incident. However, Tang insists on going home with him and clings to his leg. The freeloader reprimands the bot and hands him over to the professor. Tang asks Ken if they are friends, but he simply leaves. Once far from the house, he finally stops. Unbeknownst to him, Tang shakes in fear as his memories about the professor return. Suddenly, Kato intercepts Ken and frantically asks about the robot's whereabouts. This time, he introduces himself and apologizes regarding their threatening demeanor. He sends Ken his identification as a researcher. Kato explains that he worked with Baba before, but they were developing AI for the military, a secret project. One day, while they were conducting a shooting test, one of the bots named James showed fear. Despite Kato's prompts to Baba to stop the test due to the human-like AI, the senior professor did nothing, which confused the other AIs and resulted in a shooting spree, injuring the personnel in the facility. Baba stole Tang's chip before leaving and setting the lab on fire. Since the project was a secret, it was covered up as an accident. Upon hearing this, Ken takes Kato's car and rushes to Baba's residence. Meanwhile, Tang does its best to run away from the professor. When the freeloader arrives at the house, he discovers the two are in the basement lab. Baba locks all the doors, trapping them inside. He turns on the surveillance screens, and they see Kato looking for them in the house. Then, the professor shows him the footage of Ken and thanks him for giving him unique data for being a sore loser. The freeloader tells him it's alright to gather more data as long as he takes Tang. But Baba clarifies that once the data has been collected, the memory cache will be cleared. He explains his ideals that the key to infinite wealth is AI, which will liberate humans. He attacks Ken with a metal beam, and Ken falls to the floor, hurting his arm. Baba approaches Tang, and fortunately, Ken stops him. The professor pushes him to a wall with a cart, but the freeloader does the same to him, and Baba collapses. Ken urges Tang to leave, but an arm robot controlled by the professor suddenly grabs his head, throwing him to the wall. Tang checks Ken, and Baba heads for the bot. However, the younger man grabs his leg to prevent him from touching Tang, and declares that it's his precious friend. Just as Baba is about to hit Ken with a metal beam, Tang charges at him, but it's kicked away. Ken Ken grabs the chance to wear the control gloves of the robotic arm and punches the professor with all his might. Tang urges Ken to escape, but the metal closet the robotic arm hits loses balance and drops on the bot. Tang becomes unresponsive, so the freeloader opens its chest to see the fuel glass broken again. He changes it with a new one, but it fails to work, so he calls Kato. The researcher instructs him to check for broken wires and connect them again to the core, but when Ken inquires which side since there are two slots for the red and blue cables, Kato confesses it's only Baba who knows. He warns Ken that if he plugs the wrong one, the core will short circuit and the whole system will be destroyed. This reminds Ken of his trauma in the surgery room. The freeloader recites what Tang always says. They are there for each other. Due to this, he courageously plugs the wires. Ken anxiously waits for the result, but nothing happens. On the verge of losing hope, the core lights up and the bot awakens, looking at the surroundings and staring at Ken. After a while, it speaks, introducing itself as James. Despite his disappointment in Tang's memory loss, Ken speaks with the robot to remind him of his identity. Having no response, the man tears up as he narrates Tang's life based on what he knows. Meanwhile, the robot begins to remember how it accidentally escaped from Baba. Then, it saw a horse truck named Tanigawa, but because of the faded letters, it read the brand as Tang. It wandered until it reached Ken's back garden, where he first met his friend. Suddenly, Tang's childish voice echoes as it states the word found. The friends emotionally express their love to each other and share a hug. Soon, the authorities arrive to arrest Baba. On the other hand, Kato approaches Ken to say that their facility has now gained ownership of the chip inside the bot. However, if the freeloader agrees to join their team, they'll allow him to keep Tang as long as he reports valuable data to them. Kato presents him with a contract, but with the condition that his family must also 
will agree. Because of this, Ken grabs Tang's hand and hurries to return home. Meanwhile, Emmy has finished packing her things. She holds her bags and gives one final look at the house. Then, the door opens with Ken and Tang announcing their home. Emmy welcomes them, and Ken spots the broken clock where it originally belonged. He commends his wife for fixing it, but the woman coldly tells him she won't have to do anything about it soon, leaving Ken speechless. She walks away, but Tang blocks her and plays the voice of Ken, cursing the boy in the plane. The duo becomes embarrassed, so the bot tries again, but this time, it's the sentence saying Ken is unemployed. Finally, Tang plays Ken's voice recording before they left Baba's house. The man told the bot they'll go home so he can be a doctor, and one day, he'll tell Emmy everything's going to be okay. The wife stares at her husband with tears, and Ken becomes ashamed as his voice plays on loop. Then, he tells Emmy face to face that he'll keep moving forward. He winds his father's clock and apologizes for his shortcomings. He ends his speech by saying that everything will be meaningless without Emmy. The woman smiles and gives him the cork, and Ken verbalizes its meaning. Emmy faces Tang and thanks him for bringing Ken back. However, when the bot looks at her, it announces that there are two hearts. The wife confesses that she's pregnant, but has thought it'd be better not to tell Ken and raise the kid alone. Now, she's sure that he'll be a great father. Ken balls his eyes out, and Tang calls him. He tells the bot he's leaking, but Tang corrects him, saying he's healing. Ken crouches in front of his friend and declares it's extraordinary. Emmy goes beside him, and when Ken is about to kiss his wife, he notices Tang's excitement, so he places a cloth to cover it. Moments later, Tang remains happily dancing, covered in fabric. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.